Hello, everybody. My name is Carrie Putcher. I am City Market's Assistant Outreach and Education Manager. I'm the one who's been sending you all of the emails, so now you can at least put half of a face to a name. Um, thank you so much for tuning in to class tonight. We are so excited to have Gary Stewart back with us, the pie guy of local fame around here in Burlington, Vermont, to teach his date and macadamia nut pie. If at any point during tonight's class you have questions for Gary or for me, you can type them into the question and answer box. I'll go back behind the scenes and put a, an announcement into that so you can see where that is and how to access it. So those questions will come to me and then you'll hear me ask them of Gary or I'll answer them myself privately if there's something I can answer. Um, if you're joining us a little bit late, go ahead and hit live. It's down near the play pause button and that will catch you up to where we are rather than forcing you to watch from the very beginning. Um, and if any questions come up or any sort of sound or camera issues, just let me know in that Q&A box and I will do my best to figure it out. But I think without further ado, I'm going to turn things over to Gary and we are going to bake a pie together. Gary, take it away. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Gary Stewart and I work here at the South Bend City Market Store and I'm the pie guy. Uh, I don't know how many of y'all saw my last uh, presentation, which was in late October, I believe, where we did two pies. I wanted to give people the, the ch uh, choice between doing one of them. I did not expect people to try to bake both of them at the same time. But, uh, um, you know, just a little bit about myself. I'm originally from Texas. Excuse me. My husband, Fred Patchen, is in the back supporting me, uh, helping helped me get all the stuff here ready for to tonight. Um, and I grew up with pie. My mother was a terrific cook and a ter terrific pie maker. Her meringues were perfect. Uh, her meringue pies, her other pies, uh, pecan pies. So she was just tremendous. And her mother, Grandma Cray, her pies, as I would like to tell people, it, they were like God coming down in pie form. Um, as a little kid, I was much, very much a loner and uh, didn't feel much connection with folks. Uh, but when my family visited my mother's family up in Breckenridge, Texas, uh, some of you might know that's halfway between Fort Worth and Abilene, way out in West Texas. Um, she baked these incredible pies. Uh, her husband and she had a, a cafe outside of Breckenridge, Texas. He did the gabbing like an Irishman and she did all the cooking. But when we visited them, you know, the cafe wasn't in business anymore, um, but her pies, were just so beautiful and so delicious. I mean, salt, uh, caramel, uh, caramel meringue pie, uh, coconut meringue pie, chocolate meringue pie, uh, lemon chest pie. And also my, I felt seen and heard by my grandmother. And I think that's why I associated the pies with how she made me feel seen. And I could just taste the love, see the love in her pies. And that just kind of hooked me from then on. And so when I could start cooking, I really wanted to learn how to make pies. And also for me, um, pies, tarts, uh, you know, rustic cakes, or just cooking is a way for me to express my love to my friends. And it's, it's always been like a, a way of community building. You know, we, we can do it with uh, singing, music, uh, book reading, but there's something about food that really can cross boundaries quite a bit. Maybe not so much with family on Thanksgiving. Okay, there are limits, but, uh, but I found that with food, uh, it has a wonderful way of bringing people together. And I also feel like maybe, you know, people are so much in the rush that, uh, you know, there's certain uh, food art forms that aren't practiced as much. And also people think, oh, it's too difficult. I can't ever do a crust. I don't know how many times I've heard people say that. 
And it's like, no, it's not hard. It's a little time consuming, but you know, anything worthwhile is. And you can make it into a wonderful experience. And let me tell you, people appreciate good food. Okay. And they really appreciate <laughs> that you took the time and effort to give them your best, whatever it is, the best cocktail they ever had, the best pot roast they ever had. Well, it can be the best pie they ever had, and you will be popular. Okay. Now, what we're going to be doing is uh, today, and I just remembered I need um, heavy cream, a small container of heavy cream. Uh, that was one thing I forgot to get. It's, we went through our list, but there's always a possibility that something is forgotten. So, my bad. But we're going to be doing a macadamia date pie. And I got this. This is a photocopy of what I lost the magazine. It was from a gourmet magazine for November 1983. That's around the time I started exploring baking. And the Gourmet Magazine, along with Martha Stewart, were wonderful ways for me to find pies and tarts to experiment on and, you know, just broadly my cooking skills. Uh, my mom never showed me how to make a pie, nor my grandmother, but they inspired me. So, but anyway, I wish you could have seen this in color, but uh, I've been making this pretty much since that time, and it's one of the best pies I make. My friends always love it. And this is what it looks like. There we go, we see it in color. You can see it in color. <laughs> and it's still a little warm. Uh, so this is what we'll be making uh, tonight. And it looks complicated, it isn't. Is it wonderful? It's wonderful. Okay, so uh, first things first, we're going to make the crust. And uh, this is where people say, oh, I can't do it. Uh, pardon me, I'm not used to having a shield. <laughs> so if you see crinkles across my face, it's just because I accidentally hit the plastic uh, shield. So, but the uh, people say, oh, I can't, I can't do a crust. I said, no, 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 you can do a crust. There's just some things people need to remember about making crust. And um, some of my hard rules about it are, you need to have all your ingredients cold. And I mean cold. Uh, I keep my flour. Of course, I love King Arthur flour. Even when I was down in Dallas, before my husband and I moved up here, uh, I would use King Arthur and also organic whenever it's available for me. Thank you. And a, um, so I would keep my flour and my sugar in the freezer, keep them in the freezer and then have the butter uh and we have ah uh, yes we have the butter i keep that in the refrigerator until the last minute as well as the shortening and i use even though i'm from the south and everyone uses crisco down there i don't know how it is up here in new england but i get the organic all vegetable shortening that's non-hydrogenated by spectrum and at our store city market we do carry this um, and i keep them in the refrigerator because when everything is cold the flour the sugar uh, particularly the flour really needs to be cold um, it prevents the butter fat and the shortening to start melting the same reason to have the butter and the shortening cold is that they're not going to start melting right away. You don't want that. What When that happens, 
we don't have pockets of fat and shortening in the flour, and that is what helps to get a flaky crust, okay? You have the little spots or little balls of shortening and butter, which once it's being baked, it helps provide a tasty crust. And so uh, we have to have make sure everything is cold. And then when the water that we add is also cold as well to, you know, um, into the uh, dry flour uh, mixture to um, gradually build it up, we use iced water or very, very cold water to do that. So the important thing is keep every everything cold. Now, back in uh, Dallas, when even in the winter time, it, it can be warm. And then when you have a kitchen like Fred and I had that had no air condition, no central air, uh, the kitchen heated up. And so I would even put my uh, metal bowl in the uh, freezer to get it super cold. Um, so everything wouldn't warm up too quickly. So, but here in New England, I haven't had really to do that. But again, the main thing is that the ingredients need for the flour needs to be cold. Now, um, we're looking at putting in two and a half cups of flour. While Gary is starting his crust, we'd also love to know where people are watching from. We found out that our audience is much larger than just Burlington, Vermont, which is awesome. So if you would like to put in the Q&A box where you're watching from, that would be awesome. Thanks. Yes, last time we had someone from San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And I want to say Portland or Oregon. Yeah. And we had someone from a uh, El Paso, which is... Uh, that was amazing. It was cool. So, uh, but you see, that's where cooking brings people together. You know, good food um, sharing. Those are community building um, skills and you know, this year and especially last year were rough, okay, for a lot of folks. And uh, and this was a rough year too. And we need to be good to ourselves. We need to um, reach out to each other. And food is a way of developing and strengthening bonds and some comfort, okay? Now, I don't, I'm not, I don't recommend eating pie like that every day. I mean, no. <laughs> it's like Martin Luther said, when you sin, sin lustfully, but not that often, okay? So we have to watch our health. Now that's two and a half cups of flour. And uh, then I will put three teaspoons of sugar. So um, even in a regular pie crust, um, the recipes that I have used, they always have added sugar to it. Now, if you're doing like a special kind of tart, they will uh, ask, to make a what we call a pâté sucré, uh, a very sweet butter crust, okay. and salt. Yep, let me grab that for you. Okay, and yeah, I love. Thank you very much. I love these old things. I don't know how. I'm, how often people nowadays use them, but for me, it's a lifesaver. So we sip those together. And three-fourths teaspoon of salt. Okay. 
Somebody asked, um, is there a reason for not using all butter or all shortening and why you're doing a mix? Um, there's so many <laughs> different recipes for pie crust. Um, I usually just, I select a recipe that I like. I can see what it looks like. If it has a photo, that helps. I like that. I like to know, have a profile of it. And also I can look at the ingredients and say, well, I have cooked something like this before, or I've had something like that before. As for crust, personally, my own experience has been, I like having the butter for the flavor and the shortening uh, for flakiness. That's why I have both. And, um, but in, in this recipe, it's predominantly butter, but half a cup of shortening. Okay, if I'm looking at that, yeah. Half a cup of a um, non-hydronated vegetable shortening. For some recipes, uh, like the sugary tart crust, a pâté sucré, that will be butter. Other pie crusts, like for, I, I've seen like all, only shortening crust for uh, blackberry pie for some reason. But then you can add butter to the blackberries themselves. So it depends. Um, I, but again, for a general pie making, unless the, the recipe that I'm using is specifying butter only or shortening only or whatever, I will combine both of them. And my experience, you know, I get a great crust. I just get a great crust. It has the buttery flavor, but it also is flaky. Okay, so I hope that answers your question. Um, now that we have this, um, our flour mixture, what I'm going to do now is a way of cutting in the butter fat. Using a grater. Now, when I first started, you know, I followed the recipes and it was saying, oh, you know, just cut up your, you know, butter in little tiny cubes and then you work it in with the fork and, uh, well, you know, I didn't know any better. I just follow the recipe. And over time, it's like, oh, that is time consuming and it's difficult. And uh, so I found this. I don't know how many of you have this, a grater that has different um, grating holes. Uh, this one has three broad slots on it. And what I have found is I get nice ribbons of butterfat. That makes it so much easier. So okay. much easier. We had uh, Burlington and the San Francisco Bay Area. Wow. Back with San Francisco. Yeah. Hooray. Covered the country. So, as you can see, now some people may prefer to wear gloves, and that is perfectly fine. Uh, but I just slice enough butter so that it gets in, but I don't want to put too much butter in all at once because then it defeats the, the purpose of grating it because then they clump. So I do like this so that I can get enough butter to work with. And then I sprinkle the flour over the butter. Try not to make a mess. Because then if there are some pieces that are too close to each other, putting some flour on top of them, on top of it, will help, you know, prevent clumping of the butter. So I just work with it. Got someone in Waterbury, Vermont as well. 
Oh, hey, Waterbury. I love Waterbury. I also love Burlington too. Ben and I live in Winooski and we love Winooski too. We just love this area. We love Vermont. <laughs> We're trying to get as many of our Texas friends to get out of Texas and move up here. Yeah, we've had snow already. I know probably the person watching from San Francisco has not had snow, but we've had a couple snows already. Uh, and yeah, it seems to me that we've had more snow this December than we did last mm -hmm. December, which I, a Yule, I mean, I love the Yule season and the solstice and the observing of the seasons. And, and Texas is like perpetual summer with a, a week of freakish cold weather. Uh, a very brief autumn. And then tornadoes and <laughs> hailstorms and and then just. Hellish heat. Uh, that's why we moved up here is that we just can't take the heat anymore. So but. Uh, well, we love it up here and we love the food culture in Burlington and in the state itself. We have found wonderful restaurants cafes, um, bakeries, and here and across the state. So it's a, a foodie person's heaven. And if you notice that your butter may be getting a little soft or clumping a little bit or is sticking too much to your fingers, I just roll it in the flour mixture and it kind of becomes more, more easily handled. Here I go, just slicing away. Now I don't know about y'all, but uh, and I'm pie making or just cooking. I like to have some nice music in the background, some jazz. Uh, cafe jazz or something like that. Or I listen to some classical music or Baroque music or whatever music you like. I, I, uh, I don't think I could do heavy metal or death metal. When I'm cooking, I make, I'm afraid of what would come out of the oven. Um, but whatever is relaxing for you, that's, that's the most important thing. The thing is make the cooking a joy. Make it fun, make it enjoyable. Uh, fix your favorite cup of coffee or tea uh, or a glass of wine. Not too much, though, because you want to stay sober while you're cooking. Um, but uh, make it fun, make it relaxing, light a candle. I know there were times um, when I was more into Buddhist meditation. Sometimes I would light a candle. And I think I even at times would have a photo of my grandmother there and, and just light a candle and bow to her in gratitude or thank you for showing me the joy of doing something like this. It's a beautiful thing and and for me it was a way of remembering her it's a way of remembering her honoring her and my mother uh because and now they're they're part of me not just biologically of course but the skills that they shared the love that they share and this is a way of keeping that going that continuation process I, I always get excited when people tell me, oh, you know, I'm going to make for you what my mother made or her grandmother made or grandfather made. And it's just like, wow, they're sharing their lives with me. They're sharing their lives with me. And I think uh, that I always feel like I'm a very special person um, when that happens. So, um, OK, we're done with the butter. Now the fun part is getting out the shortening. 
we had somebody else here who's from the San Francisco Bay Area as well, who says they could use some of our snow and water out there in California. Yes, yeah. Send it your way. Yeah, yeah. I my heart goes out to you folks out there uh, with all the fires that you've had and uh, it's rough. It's rough, but uh, if we can, we will. Mm -hmm. OK, or even better, come to Vermont. <laughs> If you can't move, at least visit. And the uh, it's beautiful all year long. It really is. The springs may be muddy, <laughs> but the uh, well are muddy. But uh, the flowers here, you wouldn't believe how many different kind of flowers bloom here. It's just it's like the Garden of Eden. It's just amazing. Uh, summer is gorgeous. It can get a little warm for us here in the Burlington area by Lake Champlain. And I didn't realize that, oh, it can get humid here. <laughs> uh, I thought nothing could be, well, nothing is as humid as Houston, maybe uh, New Orleans, but uh, it can get warm here and humid uh, in the valleys. And the falls are just, they're just knock you out. There is just unspeakably gorgeous. Can't fully do justice to it. Um, and then the winters are are beautiful. And we have yet to have a blizzard here since. Yeah, let's wait until the twentieth when I get my snow tires on. Well, then that and probably then is. <laughs> yeah, then then that's probably when it will happen. But uh, but it a little can, bit too long. <laughs> yeah, it can get cold here we've had it where the winds with the winds blowing is like minus 15 degrees but if you're inside uh you're fine and also you know dress up warmly i mean why not uh and people do it quite fashionably here so you can look grand even when you're bundled up and I remember my husband and I, we went out for dinner and it was like one degrees. And it was OK. Of course, we didn't stay outside for hours, but uh, people were walking around. It's like, well, this is just life here. Now, uh, as you can see, uh, taking out the uh, shortening, You know, I just scoop out what I can. And I said half a cup, but since the pieces were kind of. Not solid, I went ahead and tried to fill up a cup, but there was plenty of empty spaces. Uh, so it, I think it probably comes out to being the equivalent to half a cup of shortening. Now, again, I'm going to put the flour mixture over the shortening and the shortening cutter, or I guess a pastry cutter, you gotta have this. It just makes it so much easier. And what I'm doing is working those blades into the flour where the shortening is, okay? And I'm gonna keep doing this until the flour mixture looks like it has little peas in them. Thankfully not green. Someone says lived in Rhode Island for a couple of years and really enjoyed New England. Did get to visit Vermont and would love to again. Oh yeah, it's it's just when we moved here. I mean, we're my husband and I were from the uh, Metroplex of Dallas Fort Worth, which is forget how many millions of people there. I want to say three million, but I think it's even way more than that. <laughs> yeah, and freeways everywhere. And I mean, there are some nice areas in Fort Worth and Dallas, but natural beauty, not so much. And the uh, coming here was just like somebody putting Solve 
on a deep wound or the, the image I like is like a little baby who's been really, really hungry for a long time and mom provides, starts nursing the baby. That's how I felt. Like, so dried up for natural beauty. And it, it's just so healing, so healing. And also the people up here have been so, so friendly. So, so friendly. So it's a joy to come and visit. And like I said, there's great food up here. So I'm working this in. You don't want to have big hunking pieces of shortening, but you want to have little pockets, little balls of shortening. And you see, this is not hard, okay? It's not hard. There are just some things, like I said before, simple rules, guidelines you go by, okay? No need to make anything difficult. Now, if I was at home, my hubby, well, of course, he will always provide a um my my husband fred he's in the back <laughs> cheering me on and the uh and helps help me bring a lot of all this stuff excuse yeah, me it's hard with the face shield <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm not graceful with this yet no i don't think he always can... keeps me hydrated <laughs> yeah uh you know we're to... back to uh um, an indoor uh, face covering mandate here in Burlington, so had to had to play it safe. Right, and also, I mean, in some ways, there's really not a need for me to do it, but I think it's a good, um, how to put it, an act of solidarity mm -hmm. uh, that I'm doing this because it has been spiking in Vermont for what the past month. Mm -hmm. If not more. But that's why we're doing this cooking class to avoid thinking. That is right. And escapism. Excuse me, I had to flit over there to get my fork. Now, with the water, usually I start with a cup of ice cold water. And Carrie was so gracious to get a pitcher of ice water ready for me. But I don't just pour it all down at once because then you'll just get a big blob of liquefied flour. No, no. Um, the water is important, but a little bit at a time because you don't want to put in too much cold water in because then, heaven forbid, that you get a soupy pie crust dough. Um, but you don't want it to be overly wet. OK, then that will tend to uh, to create a tougher crust. OK, we we don't want that. So we do a little at a time. Like so. And then I work it in, as you can see, there were you can see some of those pockets of fat or shortening, OK? Butter fat or shortening. And I'm just working. The water in a little bit at a time and you know it, it will start clumping at some point and that is that's what i look for again just so that you can see i just put a little bit here a little bit there and then i work it in like so And again, I find this very relaxing. Anybody have any questions for Gary at this point? Feel free to put them into the question and answer box and I will. Oh, yeah. And also uh, share your own pie making or dessert making experiences with the folks online. Mm -hmm. This is our little community here. 
Now, I'll show you that, you know, I'll see if I can keep a solid lump that, that doesn't crumble. It's not quite there, but you, you do see that there's more moisture where the clumps can, at least there's some clumping together, okay? But again, we want to be very, very careful not to go cray cray with the cold water. The greatest sin, if you will, in pie making, particularly when, it's, when it comes to crust, is to have a tough crust. Now, people say, well, the filling is the most important thing. Well, okay, I've had pies where the filling is good. But the crust is not supposed to be like paper mache or cardboard. I mean, no. A perfect pie, and it doesn't have to look perfect, it has to taste good, is that you have a pie crust that's tasty and flaky. Now you can see it's clumping. And I think I can form a dough ball with this. But again, the crust to me is as important as the filling. I mean, if you if, if we don't get give a hoot about the quality of the crust, well then just fix a pudding. Good grief. Why waste your time trying to make a crust? But I tell you. People love a good crust. That's the joy of it. A great filling with a wonderful, buttery, flaky crust, or a crust that has ground up roasted nuts in it, or, of course, lots of butter, I'm sure. Uh, that's a wonderful thing. I don't know about you, but when it came to uh, when my mom made banana pudding, I didn't care for the bananas so much, but I love the sugar cookies and the pudding together. Mm -hmm. That dry kind of combo of the dry, a little bit crisp with the moist pudding. So the same thing for me with pies, you know. So as you're finishing that crust dough ball, I had someone email me earlier and ask if the recipe as written is for one pie crust. Like, this is not a double crust pie that we're making no, tonight. No, so no, that half. No, this okay. is for one pie. Okay. Okay. There may be a little bit more than needed. Better that than a thin, skimpy crust that gets uh, brittle okay because it's easily more easily overcooked or uh, yeah so i don't like that so this is for one crust and this is about the right size so um what i do then i i hate plastic just hate it so i use uh, recyclable bags or compostable bags and I will put this in um, in the uh, refrigerator. And I just realized uh, it probably be good to uh, sprinkle some flour on it. Here I am throwing a blizzard of flour on it, but then I roll it around so it doesn't get sticky in the bag. And then I'll make a little indention so that when it's time for me to roll it out, it's ready. Now, I do have a pie dough in the refrigerator that I made ahead of time. Plus, I've already made a completed pie dough that's been rolled out and put into a, a pie plate. But I wanted to show you how to roll out uh, pie dough. Do you want this to stay in the fridge or out now? Uh, let's keep that in the refrigerator. Okay. There's no risk of shattering the Pyrex with putting a cold Pyrex into an oven? Shouldn't, but let's go okay. ahead. Pyrex, I swear by Pyrex. 
I've shattered a pie plate before. I'm always nervous. But oh, probably because okay. it wasn't real pyrex. Yeah, well, let's do that. <laughs> let's do that. Was it pyrex? No, it was like off brand, like anchor hawking or whatever. No, uh, that's uh, probably why. No, no. Uh, I grew up with Pyrex. It's not fun to hear the <laughs> My mother it. grew up with Pyrex. Well, I don't know if she did, but I, my mom definitely used Pyrex. Now, rolling, this is mine, and I've seen many different kinds. And this is a French rolling pin. I like it. it for me, it fits. I don't have to deal with the knobs. And there's just kind of this uh, streamlined feel to it. Uh, it may not look as intimidating like some of these heavy duty rolling pins that look like missiles. Um, kind of wonder, you know, how the situation is in those households. But the, uh, but I like this. And of course, I need to get a wooden board this big really would like to have one like this. So the thing is, uh, I let the ball of pie dough in the refrigerator for 30 minutes, unless the recipe tells me otherwise. OK, and again, uh, if it's just a regular pie dough, then you know I think 30 minutes in the cooler is fine. Sometimes they may say an hour, but I find 30 minutes is plenty. Uh, but again, it depends on the recipe you're using. So if the recipe is telling you something different than what you normally do for a pie, then follow the recipe. So I start off like this. I wish there was a way to do it at an angle, but. And then. I know the trick sometimes is how to get a circular dough, and I this is funny. I just started noticing a way of doing this just kind of recently, and this is amazing that you can be cooking for a long time and all of a sudden you figure, oh, this is an easier way of doing it or yeah, I mean, it just happens so. That's exciting when you find out, wow, I can do it easier than what I've done before. So uh, I kind of like this. Going like this and having this like this and. But again, however you want to do it is fine. The thing is, try to keep. The dough as circular as possible because. The pie plates are circular. But I kind of like this way that's kind of just popped up for me recently. And it's just using the tip or towards the tip of the uh, rolling pin. Any sharings? Not yet, but hopefully people are encouraged. Any questions or comments? Nope. People are just enjoying watching and learning. Okay, great. This will be a fun series of classes to get back to once we can have in person again. Get everybody actually in the yeah. talking and chatting. Well, it sounds like Omicron, from what, and I've been really following the medical information. I forget the British doctor's report. I mean, the British doctor who's been reporting on COVID for a long time is highly, highly respected internationally known and respected and it seems like omicron while it's more easily transmitted may turn out to be um uh not as severe mm -hmm. right but uh, people who have not been vaccinated can still get sick mm -hmm. and so it's better to be vaccinated but it's not it seems like it may not be the kind of killer that uh, Delta has proven and that already in South Africa, uh, Omicron has beaten out uh, Delta as the main virus. It's much more um, 
contagious. So it's beating out Delta, but seemingly the it's not as the symptoms aren't as bad. So that's good news. So hopefully we'll be able to do in person class classes. in person classes. And I prefer in person anyway, um, just as a rule. And as you can see, I'm dusting off the excess flour. Get a pastry brush. They're wonderful, simple, but so helpful. I mean, I just I love having one. And I make sure that I dust it everywhere where there is flour. As you can see, um, cooking, baking is a little messy. <laughs> my husband will attest to that. I do have to say in my favor, I clean as I go along. So, um, but I can't really do that here. Ah, uh, there's always a saint amongst us. So, what I'm going to do, normally when I do the overhang, well, I usually have an overhang of pie dough. For my pies. But this is. Um, a pie shell that you don't have to bake ahead of time. Like pre, you know, a half baked, half baked, uh, partially baked um, pie crust. And if that is the case, then I wouldn't be doing something like this. OK, because then pre-baking the shell, it would just shrink. So I would need an overhang for that. But this one, I don't have to refrigerate. I mean, I don't have to pre-bake. So I can just, you know, create a nice wall. We had someone share a pie memory. They say some family members recall an apple pie from a bakery in San Fran's Chinatown, which closed a long time ago. We've tried to replicate it, but just haven't figured it out. Oh, let me tell you. Well, try to locate it if you can on the internet. Track it down. <laughs> I've, you know, uh, go to used bookstores, maybe, or gourmet magazines. <laughs> For, uh, I collected them starting. Uh, June of 1983 um because I just happened to be in a grocery store and I saw their cover for their magazines and they always had in their early days just beautiful photos on the cover and there could be an article uh, about that restaurant and gourmet magazines just really, you know, not just with baking, uh, just opened my eyes to a lot of different ways, you know, just wonderful um, meals, uh, dishes that I was not familiar with, and just, just wonderful stuff. And also quite often they would focus just on like beans or sweet potatoes or, cookies or brownies or or they would have someone travel somewhere like one of my favorites was when someone went to Germany to ski in the wintertime and they had German Christmas recipes. So look and see as for apple pie. Wow, there's so many different apple pie recipes. I make a salted caramel caramel apple pie that people love. And that is fun. But I'd also just like a plain old simple, nicely spiced 
pumpkin, I mean, apple pie. I mean, and one of the things that really, one of the many things that excites me about being in Vermont was seeing all the different heirloom apples that I had never heard of. And I got some recently, and I'm going to try to make an apple cranberry pie that I've had the recipe for for decades from Gourmet Magazine, and I never made it. Like, why? So I'm going to use that. So it's just, you know, finding the, there are apples that are fit for baking and there are apples that are not. Never use a red delicious apple. Hmm. That is a then. What was that? I don't like them just perfectly. Oh, I hate them. It, it, you know, it's like eating, to me, it's like eating styrofoam. It's like gross. Um, the all, I guess an all purpose apple for baking would be uh, Granny Smith's because they're uh, tart and that kind of helps balance with the sweetness. Also, Golden Delicious can be used too, but then I, I always usually follow um, the recommendations that the uh, recipe gives. But here, I just couldn't believe just the here at our store, um, the different heirloom apples. And they had uh, identifiers like how old this kind of apple is, what is it used for? Is it mostly for baking? Is it just for eating? Or, you know, and that's a big help too, because then it's like, oh, this has been traditionally used for baking. So that's, that's really helpful. I also like, I have to admit, I, I love Macintoshes. And I've made some great apple pies with them. And of course, never prefer, you don't always have to add that, but adding a little bit of the whiskey or the bourbon to your apple pies is always a, a nice thing. Okay, so as you can see, I've made, doesn't have to be perfect, but. Okay, I'm gonna interrupt real quick. Um, is anybody having sound issues on their end? If you could let me know in the Q&A. I'm hearing a little bit of feedback on my end, and I'm just wondering if it's me or if other people are having the same issues. So, that is done. Now, huh, we come to the filling. So while that is chilling, 30 minutes. Would you like me to put it in the fridge? Uh, yes, yeah, so if you, if you, yeah. Uh, wait a minute, it's this one. Right, we're gonna use this one. Yeah, we're gonna use that one, that can stay there for right now. Yep. So now I'm ready to make the filling. Now, ahead of time, I chopped up, uh, let's see, about, 0 0.315 pounds or I got something you know something like this and and, and this is you know a half one cup of dates I chose to make it new for dates they look softer to me so we are having a few sound issues apparently people are getting some glitches so I'm going to try restarting both of our microphones we're going to go quiet for just a second and then we'll come right back. So Gary, if you wouldn't mind pulling that out of your pocket, out of your pocket, the, the transmitter. Yeah. And just holding down the power button until it goes off. It's on the top.
So I can go ahead. See if it's working, but you should be okay. Okay, good. Let me know when. Yeah, I just am trying to pull it back up on my phone so that okay, good. we can Thank make you. sure we're getting good sound. Sorry, folks. Hopefully you can hear us, but we're just doing a little bit of fiddling, trying to make sure that things are back to normal. But we'll see. Is it still glitchy for everybody? All right. Um, people are still saying they're having a little bit of a glitching. Do you happen to have your cell phone in your pocket? One thing we can try. Sometimes it's signals from that. It's still glitchy. Yep. Well, I'm so sorry. I'm trying my best back here, but I don't have too many options for fixing it. Is it still happening? It's still glitching. People can hear you, but it's very like robotic glitchy. Oh. I don't think so, because you've been on your phone the whole time, right? And it only just now started like five minutes ago, so. Am I hitting something or? Nope, it's probably something to do with the receivers. Because it's both of our mics are making the noise, it's not. that fixed um i switched a setting so that i have to wait about 30 seconds to hear my own voice coming through my phone but see if that means all right it sounds like it's better Okay, I think we're good. Gary, go for it. All I don't know right. what I did, but something happened. Sorry about that. Sorry, folks. Technology is a blessing, and it can be a pain in you know where. So, um, but grateful for it. Um, ahead of time, I chopped up the dates, and then, then I put some boiling water over it about three-fourths of a cup and just letting it sit and soak and that softens up the um, the dates which we want to do and uh, I love dates for baking just wonderful so letting that soak and that would be part of the filling now I separated one egg, I separated one yolk, and then the egg wine. But then the rest of the eggs, I will put with this one egg white. This one yolk, I will add two teaspoons of heavy cream to put a glaze on the rim of the pie. And as you remember seeing the uh, earlier on in the class, 
the uh, I showed you the completed pie, and it had that beautiful glossy look, a golden glossy look, and that's what we'll have with the glaze, which we only have to use a little bit uh, of it for the glaze, um, and then. Uh, we put the rest of the glaze in with the egg mis mixture, which will also will be adding the sugar uh, and the spices and the dates and the nuts. The macadamia nuts. Oh. Our eggs in. I'll get my cream. And two tables, two teaspoons. Someone commented they love how with this recipe there's no leftover egg white or egg yolk to use. Yeah, sometimes you can't get away. It depends on the recipe. And I hate waste. My parents grew up in the Great Depre Great Depression in the uh, Texas, and resources were rare, or you know, uh, it was a hard time. Though my mom grew up with chickens, she hated chickens, but she. <laughs> She was great with cooking them. She just thought they were nasty things <laughs> because she had to feed them. But they had eggs, so that was good. But I, I just hate, you know, wasting anything, you know. So there I have my glaze, and when the time is ready, I'll get it. So I have that. And the butter, I had a um, two tablespoons. Yeah, two tablespoons of melted butter. This has cooled, so it's not uh, hot. You don't want to put anything hot with your eggs, or you're going to cook your eggs before you can use them. Um, I've had a, an experience or two where I thought my butter was cooler than what it should, than it actually was. And saw my eggs <laughs> turn to scrambled eggs cooked. Uh, so, so it's always good to try to have things done ahead of time. We have someone who says they would love to know your recipe for pecan pie if you're willing to share you it. You know, I grew up with it, and I have to say, my mother's pecan pie was just put nearly all the others to shame because so much, so many of the pecan pies I grew up with, one, they use the whole, uh, uh, they don't chop up their pecans. They have these big chunks of pecans, and you know, I'm it's like I'm eating a pecan, uh, a, a shell in my mouth. You know, I don't like that feel. Some people like it. Some people like how it looks if you decorate it. Uh, I like my pecans or any nuts chopped. So my, the first thing that I feel or sense is not the shape of the, the nut. I rather have both the feel of the nut plus the creaminess of the filling. Another grave sin of so many southern uh, pecan pies is that they're overly sweet. I mean, my God, it's like eating raw candy uh, and it's just sweet. And but my mother was able to make her pecan pie where. It was almost creamy her pecan pie. 
I don't know how she did it. And I have yet to locate her recipe. Of course, you know, get a good pie book and you'll find a good pecan pie. But I grew up with it. And so I was more interested in like walnuts, you know, uh, macadamia nuts, uh, hazelnuts are, yeah, I love hazelnuts. Roasted hazelnuts are just, or almond. So uh, I haven't really done much of pecans because I grew up with pecan pies, but a good pecan pie is amazing. And of course, you can add a little bit of bourbon, bourbon. to it. Yep. <laughs> Yay, or chocolate and, you know, um, there's ways to do it. My mom didn't make hers glamorous like that, but her pie was just amazing. I got to track that down. Fred, you're going to have to help me track or remind me to track that down. I mean, that is just, it was amazing. Okay, now we come to the sweeteners. And that is half a cup of regular sugar. Pardon me as I try to locate my equipment. So half a cup of white sugar, granulated. I prefer organic if at all possible, but when I see organic anything in plastic, it's like, what's the point? You know, so anyway. Uh, So half a cup, so I just put that in. I'll use the beater later. And then I use dark brown sugar. Normally, even if it, the recipe calls for light brown sugar, I love dark brown sugar. And I will, unless I'm really convinced that, okay, I, I should use the light brown sugar, I prefer using dark brown sugar all the time. It's just that the extra molasses just really gives a deeper flavor to it. And I'm about flavor. I don't want to give you something that's, oh, that's, that's pumpkin pie or that's apple pie. I wanted to like grab you by the collar and say, I'm apple pie, okay? that you taste it and not a, you know, a hint of this or no, no, you taste it. And they, uh, cause quite often I find, uh, and the same thing with just cooking in general, sometimes I just find that people make things kind of anemic, you know, it's not robust taste. It's like, no, no. I mean, I want to know, I mean, I want to, I want something flavorful. Don't give me something that, you know, you're afraid that you're going to make it too strong. You know, I mean, I do it within reason. So where I can get a richer flavor coming out, that's what I want. So there you go. Gary's Obsessions. And I'll just break these up. And again, I mean, look at this. This is simple. Simple, simple, simple. Even your husband can do this. <laughs> so I probably shouldn't say that because I know nowadays there's more guys who like to cook, who do cook. So more, more power to you guys. Okay, I'll be doing the blending a little bit further. Now I will put in the cinnamon and it will be half a cup. Oh, I'm sorry. 
Oh, half a cup. Uh, sorry, a little tired. Uh, half a teaspoon of cinnamon. And one fourth of nutmeg. I love nutmeg. I just adore it. So wonderful. And ginger. Mix that in just a little bit. And then uh, vanilla. One teaspoon. Here we go. And then I put in water and all the uh, dates. Okay. And we got that. Now we here is the earlier chilled shell. Uh, and we did you are get getting. Macadamias? What was that? Did you get the macadamia nuts? Someone asked. Are you? Oh, the macadamians. Yeah. yeah thank you. I, I didn't hear you. My apologies. Uh, so I'm getting ready to um, glaze, so I can go ahead and get the macadamians. Uh, I'm going to glaze the shell. Can they see this? And I don't want to get the glaze on the glass itself. Because I want the presentation to look as immaculate as possible. Of course, you're going to have dribbling down the side. But that's OK. It's going to be covered up by the filling. Somebody asked if this recipe needs to be made in a deep dish pie plate or if you could do it. Would it overflow a regular pie plate? It. Well, it's for a nine inch. It's for a nine inch. Mm -hmm. pie. They were just noticing that that's a, a deep dish versus a, like the shallower flatter pie and they didn't know if it would right. work. Yeah, I mean, if I just go by, you know, saying this is for a nine inch pie. Something like this, I wouldn't want to use a really deep dish. Um, now, a deep dish, I think that would be more like for fruit pies mm -hmm. to me, because if you have like a custard feeling, a deep dish uh, pie plate, it will it will affect the cooking time of your pie because you have a thicker custard filling that will take longer to cook. And so there's a concern that could happen that the top parts are cooked, but the center is not. So uh, it depends on what pie you're kind of making. If you're making a deep, deep dish fruit pie, OK, that's different than if you're trying to do a custard pie. So I just follow what the recipe was saying, a nine inch pie. A regular one, not deep dish. Now, um, what I'm going to do is go ahead and pour this in. Oh. Someone else commented that it, your recipe says to add the remaining glaze into that filling. Is that yes? Okay. That's thank you. Somebody's somebody's done their homework and read it. Yes, beforehand. thank I you love very it. much. Thank you, thank you. And I was talking about that earlier. Thank you. It's different when you're on camera than when you're doing it at home, right? 
there are times that even at home we forget little steps and then all of a sudden we realize oh my gosh i forgot to put this in but if you can catch little things like that you can correct it okay there's times i forgot oh i i forgot to put in this particular spice so i will put it in in the mixture that's already in the pie shell it's best not to do it that way but let's face it, we all make little errors, and if we can catch it soon enough, then we can correct it. Okay, thank you for the shout out. I appreciate that. And what I'm going to do now is beat it. Yep. So I'm going to mute us while Gary is beating just so that it's not overwhelming. All right, we're back. There we go. So I know the recipe said now put in the nuts, but since I'm short on space up here, I'm just going to go ahead and pour this in and then I will chop up my nuts. And I may be a little maniacal about it, but I don't want to miss out or miss any of the wonderful mixture. Okay. And then I kind of twirl around the, the dates, you know, so they're evenly spaced. And now comes the macadamia nuts and oh there we are they were hiding from me all right we'll use about hmm how much was this eight ounces give her well we'll take though we may not use all of them it just kind of depends on how much can fill the pie shell well and this is a very sharp knife and this is how I'm cutting, chopping. Because I don't, if I use a mixer, it may, I may accidentally pulverize them a little too much, which I don't want to do. So you're looking more for like a rough chop than a, a rough chop. chop. Okay. Yeah. Just a nice rough chop. And I'm sure there's folks who have ways of cutting nuts that may be easier than this, but you know, a nice sharp knife does the trick. And I like using this a uh, I'm going to borrow your transmitter really quick to put a new battery into it. You might oh, pull it okay. out of your pocket for me and then I'll Yeah. Switch out a battery real fast. There you go. Thank you. Sorry. I'll be right back. That knife was, I just. You okay? Oh, I can get a band aid. 
bigger than the scientists. Whoa, that is shiny. Yeah, one second. Thank you. Are we back on? Yep, should be good. All right, and as you can see, I'm just going to put my nuts like here, the macadamia nuts. I'll sprinkle them in. You can even put some of the accidental shavings in. It doesn't matter. I'll do some more. Any questions or comments so far? Um, someone else just wondering about the pie crust recipe, but I think I'll get some clarification from you from that after. Um, someone who's saying that they think it might be measurements for a double crust, but this is thicker because you've folded it over. So we'll talk about it after and I'll send a right. clarification out in an email. Yeah. Um, let's just put it this way. I don't like very thin crusts. Unless, of course, I'm doing like a sweet tart. Um, there have been times that I would do the overhang and there wasn't enough dough. Um, and then I wound up with a thin overhang that got cooked, that cooked quicker than the rest. Mm -hmm. So I like to make sure that I have enough for the overhang. And if there is a little bit extra, then I'll cut it off. And then you can make little cookies with them. <laughs> or decorations on top. Decorations on top. So I just don't like an overhang on a pie that gets it's thin. Because then, you know, when you pre, if you have to pre bake it, it'll shrink. And believe me, I've had it where it's like, oh my gosh, there is no overhang anymore. So, in a way, it's kind of play with it and see what works for you. For me, this is what works for me. Because really, if I didn't have, I need to get more pie shells, mm -hmm. but you can see how this is. And I don't even think this was enough for this size. So this is probably a 10 inch. Okay. So, um, All right, so we have about five minutes left in our class time, five to seven minutes. Now is a perfect time to put any last questions into the chat. We will wrap up right around seven as we finish this pie, get it in the oven and show you the finished one again. So now is the perfect time for any questions you want Gary to answer. And this looks fabulous, I have to say. It does look really good. And before we go, we have to have our guinea pigs, I don't know, uh -huh. not our, our support team be able to taste the pie. So we have the oven on. I'm going to put this in. And now how long of a timer should I set for that? What's your estimate? 45 on? minutes. 45, all right. Or until the filling is firm. Gotcha. So we're going to cut. This is what it will look like once it comes out of the oven. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. See, that's one thing I like a, a lot about this pie is just not only does it taste absolutely fantastic 
it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous to look at. And that's an important part of cooking and baking is also the appearance. You know, something like this is like, who encounters this every day? No, people don't. So when you offer people something like this, it's like, wow, this is extraordinary. Could you do this with other nuts other than macadamia nuts? I bet you can. Uh, or last time I made a walnut, a maple coffee walnut tart mm -hmm. or, or pie um, with semi-sweet chocolate bits. Yes, we haven't gotten Gary's other class recording up yet, but we will at some point. Um, and I mean, I was thinking about, OK, what could I do with this? Well, one, what kind of alcohol <laughs> would go well? Bourbon. Bourbon. Thank you. I was thinking about that. Thank you. I'm excited. I'll and also, out. I think maybe maybe an it. orange liqueur might oh, go yeah. well with it. Use your imagination. But try it out on yourself before you <laughs> try it out on somebody without. Or, you know. I love adding um, cardamom to everything. I oh, do. I love cardamom. And, it's like my favorite. Oh, thank you. Favorite spice. So I think cardamom would go well on this. Oh, that's a great thought. Oops. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, cardamom and pear go very well together. But I'm thinking, yeah, cardamom would be great. Um, walnuts, almonds, or you know, using marzipan marzipan filling with apples or pears, you know, or plums or prunes. That would be great. Uh, I love hazelnuts. Love them. I usually with hazelnuts, though, I usually make it use them at you know, roast them, ground them and put them in the crust. Mm -hmm. I have a. Let's see. Kahlua mocha chocolate pie, where the crust is a um, roasted hazelnuts ground up in the Nabisco Finn uh, chocolate wafers, and of course, tons of butter. Uh, and then, you know, or you can, yeah, just look, explore. Mm -hmm. Just get on YouTube and say, uh, nut pies. Best nut pies, and you know I found stuff like that. So vert it. It's amazing. I tried a bite, but I don't want to chew in people's ears into my mic. So it was fantastic. In some cultures, smacking or not smacking yeah, is right. considered inappropriate. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to smack mm -hmm. to <laughs> show me. that you do like it. So um, I'm tripping my, life. Uh, my husband is telling me he's tripping. <laughs> Fred's loving and it. I did not put any uh, illegal drug in this. <laughs> we had someone who says they love the pace of the class, very relaxed and great instruction. Thanks everybody so much for tuning in. Thank, Thank you, Gary. you. Yep. And I hope we can do more of these, uh, maybe, you know, different holiday parts of the year. Listen, there's always need for dessert, okay? <laughs> we all acknowledge that. So uh, who knows? When Valentine's come, we have some great chocolate pies, tarts, or even the sunken chocolate cake, which is like super easy and incredible. Awesome. So thank you all for coming. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I really would appreciate your feedback because this is a new endeavor for me to do, to do online classes. And again, I'm getting my website coming up, The Pie Guy, and I do have a site on Facebook, The Pie Guy. If you're in this area, you know, around Burlington, I can cook pies for the holidays. I can also do pie parties where I go to people's homes and with a group of people show them how to make a pie they want to learn how to make. And we have a great time. We have cocktails or wine and we do a pie. And then when it's done, then we eat the pie together. So 
Thank you. I wish you all a wonderful holiday season. Please be safe and much love to you. Thank you. Yep, and thank you all so much from me at City Market. Um, I will send an email out tomorrow with a survey link. So again, would love to have your feedback and I'll share it with Gary as well. Um, and I will also include his Facebook link so that you can see what that is. Thanks everybody. Have a great night and have a wonderful holiday season.